There's a chill in the air tonight at the Group of Seven Summit in Quebec, Canada, but it's not from the weather. The industrial democracies have convened in an atmosphere of argument over President Trump's trade demands. White House correspondent Yamiche Alcindor begins our coverage. The president showed no signs of backing off his tough talk on trade, even before leaving for the G7. We are not going to live with the deals the way they are. European Union treats us very unfairly, Canada very unfairly. And amid strained relations with allies, he argued that Russia should return to the G7. Moscow was evicted from the meeting after it annexed Crimea in 2014. Why are we having a meeting without Russia being in the meeting? They should let Russia come back in because we should have Russia at the negotiating table. From there, it was on to Quebec and a sudden schedule change that reflected the tensions. A planned morning meeting with French President Emmanuel Macron was canceled. They met briefly on the sidelines after trading barbs in the run-up to the summit. Yesterday, Macron tweeted, the American president may not mind being isolated, but neither do we mind signing a six-country agreement, if need be. Mr. Trump answered with a claim that, quote, the EU trade surplus with the U.S. is $151 billion. In fact, the EU's trade surplus is $101 billion when trade and services is included. Today, he fired off a new attack on European Union members and Canada, vowing to end what he called unfair trade practice against the U.S. The president has repeatedly threatened to terminate NAFTA, the North American Free Trade Agreement, unless it's revised. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau insists the Trump hardline will only hurt the U.S. Even so, they appeared cordial at their first encounter today. There we go. Thank you. Thank you. And they met again late this afternoon. Obviously, uh, trade has been a topic of discussion and will continue to be. Justin has agreed to cut all tariffs <laughs> and all trade barriers <laughs> between Canada and the United States. So uh, I'm very happy so about that. So I'd say that. NAFTA's in good shape. But we are actually working on it. It could be that NAFTA will be a different form. It could be uh, with Canada with Mexico, one-on-one, uh, -on -one, much simpler agreement, much easier to do. President Trump plans to leave the summit tomorrow before it officially ends to head to Singapore for his meeting with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. Judy? We heard uh, President Trump, Yamish, uh, say earlier today that he'd like to see Russia come back into the G7. What do the other leaders there say about that? Well, despite President Trump wanting Russia back at the negotiating table, most of the members of the G7 today flat, flatly rejected that idea. They say that they do not want to see Russia come back here. Canada released a statement through a spokesperson saying that that country's position has not changed. Several EU members, European Union members, also said that they do not want to see Russia back here. But Italy's new prime minister, a populist prime minister, said that he agrees with President Trump and says that Russia should be back for everyone's interest. Um, Russian state media is reporting that a Russian spokesperson is saying that Russia is not thinking about coming back to the G7 and that they're focused on other forums. And finally, Yamish, overall, President Trump arrived there late. He's leaving early, this on top of already tense relations. How is all this playing out uh, at this summit, and do you expect a joint communique? Well, President Trump is definitely keeping this meeting short. Um, he's leaving Saturday morning before a meeting on climate change. He's sending an aid, but a lot of our allies want to speak to President Trump about his stance on climate change. Now, Reuters is reporting that there is going to be a joint communique released by all seven members. Now, that's very important because the United States will be included in that, they're saying. The joint communique would be focused on election meddling. All seven members would say that they would share information about the Internet and social media to prevent foreign leaders from meddling in elections. That's very important because Russia has been a accused of meddling in foreign elections. Yamiche Alcindor covering the summit for us in Quebec. Thank you. Thanks, Judy.